is how do you load files? How do you how do you send your music? How do you do it in a secure way? I have one of the things that I sell are personalized digital cards, and I had to actually stop doing it because I need to talk to you, Danny, about what's the best way to do it. Because when you're talking about music and you're talking about art and you're talking about paintings, you're not just sending your name, you're sending a file. And these days that can be something that's really, you know, dangerous. And there, there's got to be a good way to do it. And Danny, if you'd just like to talk about that a little bit. I'm sorry you're going to have to repeat that bit. I just had to go and answer the door, so I was okay. away from yeah. you. No, I'm saying that um, that one of the drawbacks in the modern world for classical music is that we have to send files, and we have to learn how to send right, files yeah. in a secure way. And that's why, that's why I asked you on the show, and if you could just give us some quick ideas and put your info in the chat, um, because uh, this is something that has to be taken care of. And I know from personal experience, I, I said this, but I'll say it again. I know from personal experience, I sell personalized digi digital cards and I've stopped doing them worldwide. I do them just personally because I don't know how to safely send the files. Right. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of give you a, a, a rounded uh, sort of explanation about cybersecurity and music. And, and then we'll certainly touch upon how you share, share things. So, um, you know, I'm old enough and ugly enough to remember the time when we, when I was a teenager aspiring to be this great rock star, um, and uh, I remember we used to talk about how we copyrighted our material and we would uh, send it in recorded delivery to ourselves, a recording of something that we had um, uh, recorded. And that was uh, a, a way of a very now primitive way of, of uh, establishing copyright. Of course, things have changed now completely. You know, we're now talking about digital intellectual property on a grand scale, a global scale. Um, you know, in, in the very sense that documents of any kind are stolen on a daily basis, we're talking about millions. And I do mean millions upon millions upon millions of digital files are stolen, uh, exploited every single day around the globe. And I'm afraid music is no different. You know, there are people who will steal your music. It, it happens in mainstream pop and rock. We hear about lawsuits. Um, going against some um, popular musicians. We don't need to name them, mainly because I've forgotten their names, but we know who they are. Um, and um, in terms of how we are as musicians, we've got to be very careful. We, as in I'm, I'm including myself in the elite here, but there you go, just because I'm surrounded by uh, greatness. So I feel like I want to get on board on that one. But, you know, it's how do you protect yourself as musicians? We've spoken about marketing. We also need to think about brand. You are your own brand and you have to protect your brand. There's no good spending money on marketing and making yourself look good in the fancy photo shoots. And then someone comes along and then just destroys your brand because actually they're using your name in the most incorrect way. You've also got people pinching things in terms of your music, your creativity, your, your blood, sweat and tears. So how do we protect this? Well, you know, Kathy mentioned about how we how we uh, send files. I want to go a few steps back. Let's just go look at intellectual property. The name Kathy Barrow has weight amongst us within our global power team. You know that's why we love her to bits. That's why we're here today on a Saturday. You know because we love Kathy. You know her her name has weight to it, right? But if I went and took Kathy's name and I started using it for my own nefarious purposes, I could um, uh, piggyback, let's say off of uh, Kathy's tail coats here, coattails, coattails, that's it. And, you know, and make myself look good just by using Kathy's name. Well, hang on a minute. Kathy wants to stop that. We've got to be very careful. So if you are, you know, as musicians, in fact, even as business people here in the room, if we, if our name matters to us so much, you know, the same way that companies uh, uh, trademark and copyright uh, their logos and maybe slogans, musicians must approach it in exactly the same way because at the end of the day, your name is everything, is everything. So if your name is being used for the wrong reasons, we need to protect that name. So yes, you know what? Trademark yourself. Trademark yourself. It, it, you are intellectual property just by your name. That's one thing. The next thing is being, like, by the way, like everybody else, awareness. 80% of attacks happen via email. Guess what, musicians? That includes you, okay? You're no different from any other per individual or business owner, right? It's gonna happen. So 80% is about being aware of what's coming into your inbox, protecting your music. So we're now going on to what Kathy's saying about protecting music. So like I said, I remember being a teenager, I was going to be the next uh, Bono, 
um, that didn't happen, but I did used to record on a cassette tape. Remember those? Yeah, those really awkward things that always used to get tangled inside the tape player. Um, and um, used to send that to myself for call of delivery. Now we, we have more sophisticated ways of recording, but it also means that we are saving things in the cloud. We are saving, we are sometimes uh, having to, you know, you hear about Hollywood. I can tell you right now, so one of my favorite uh, film franchises, The Lord of the Rings, they recorded that down the road, the music down the road from me in Watford in this big, ugly town hall, this big, ugly, green, mirrored building. And they sent that via what at the time ISDN. Remember that really supposedly fast connection? Now they, you know, they sent that all the way to Middle Earth. I mean, New Zealand, you know, and there you go. You see, now that was a direct line. But what happens to the rest of us? Now, the, so um, John uh, Kutzelinis and I, we, we've been chatting recently. Hello, John. And um, and I know that John does a lot of his recordings in his studio and then he sends them off. So and a, a lot of us might relate to that. So how does how does John and everybody in this room who's a musician do that? How do we how do we protect our music? Well, the first thing is we must make sure the metadata in our files, when we're recording through whatever audio workstation we're using, make sure you've actually included lots of metadata in the file info, info right? That's really important and you need to protect it, okay? The best way to know, now I can't tell you how to, now for me, I use something called Bitwig. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an amateur enthusiast, right? So I use something called Bitwig and I know how to do that on Bitwig. I can't answer for all of your audio workstations. Go to the developers, of your audio workstations. That's your first thing you need to do. Make sure when you're recording music, you're using the metadata and you're securing and locking that metadata. It's your first line of defense. Your second thing is, if you are gonna be sending large files, well, the first thing is, most email providers won't let you send anything bigger than 10 megabytes. So you need to have a decent cloud platform. So it could be something like SharePoint. It could be something like um, a secure email service like ProtonMail. Um, they have a really cool kind of backstory. Their, their, their servers are kind of deep within the mountains of Switzerland, I believe. You know, there's, there's all of these things. You want to be, anything you send must be encrypted. I cannot emphasize that enough. It must be encrypted. It must be password protected because do you know something? Any music you send, that is your hard work. That is your hard work. You cannot risk um, in, uh, music being sent just over email. So even if it's a five meg file and you just want to, Kathy wants to send me a demo. I was like, no, 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 no. I don't care if it's five meg. Do not send it to me via email. Email emails are like postcards. You know, I always remember, um, you know, when we used to know who our postman was, right? Yes, it was before the time when post women existed, unfortunately, I'm that old. But when postman, you'd know who your postman was. And, you know, and it was, it was never even no alarm bells ever walk, you know, when when um, Alfie the postman walked up to you and said, Oh, it looks like you had a nice time away. Or your grandparents had a nice time in, in Italy. It never twigged, actually. It's because postcards are just and you can see what's written. Well, emails are just the same, they're that easy to be intercepted. Emails were never ever designed the same way the fax was never designed to have a security protocol. So the most important thing you need to do is make sure that you are using uh, some kind of encrypted service. Now, ProtonMail does a free account. Now, free usually means SHIT, but in the case of ProtonMail, it's not, okay? It just simply means you can only send a certain amount, but it's fantastic. And even on a pay level, ProtonMail is inexpensive. See, cyber people think cybersecurity is really expensive. I can tell you right now, it's not, okay? You can be very clever with that, right? So protecting your music, password protecting your files on your computer. Yeah, because if you're one of the 80% who get hit by an email attack, right, you are going to then um, unfortunately expo potentially expose your hard work, okay? Um, another thing, I I've already mentioned uh, uh, pr protecting your, so we've just spoken about protecting your music. Um, and again, thinking about, one. by the way, another great way, if you, do, do you want to know of a really quick, cheap, and a cheat? This is a cheat, right? This is like a life hack. I hate that phrase, life hack, because it just, I don't know, hack has a very negative connotation, but for me personally, but life hack here. If you want to um, protect your music, by the way, 
one surefire way is if you're registered as an well firstly register yourself as an artist on spotify and then upload a demo or should it be demo i'm not sure either way upload a demo and you publish your music it's as simple as that that's that's the digital version of shoving a tape into a jiffy envelope recorded delivery to yourself upload a demo publish it on spotify boom it's done it's a published piece of music right but importantly protect your brand now there have been people i won't I, you know, there, there have been people i've spoken to about how you um uh what do you call it uh, how you protect yourself on on social media sites on um on uh, google things like this the most important thing is to to lock down your social media accounts so i i we get constant calls during the week about oh we've been locked out of our facebook page and all this and the first question i ask is well who is one of your three to five trusted people that can help you recover your accounts and they're like what do you mean so go into your security and privacy settings on things like facebook and facebook in particular let you add a minimum of three maximum of five people trusted individuals that can help you recover your account um if your facebook is is hacked instagram i believe don't do it yet even though they are owned by facebook but most importantly facebook um because you can actually regain access to your instagram via the facebook page if you have the two links okay now there's a couple of questions someone asked how do you encrypt files okay um it depends on the software you use so there are different there are i don't want to endorse any in particular but there are we can john we can speak offline um and i can just tell you some of the names i just don't want to make it sound like an advertiser we don't do it personally we don't even have any solutions that do it but i'll i can talk to you separately about that john and yes quite right so I, i'm glad you've uh, you said that dan uh, good with yeah proton mail super easy if anybody wants any help please just reach out to me and i'm more than happy to um Give, give, give you some time. And it's only because we, we love Kathy so much that if there are people here in this room, I'm happy to sort of provide, provide you know, a quick five, 10 minutes. Uh, and I think that's really it. I, I, there is plenty I, I'm more I could cover, but I'm aware of time. So thanks, I Kathy. Just, I just put um, the page again in the chat. Danny, you're on the page now. Your LinkedIn, um, <coughs> your LinkedIn link is on that page. I just pulled a quick uh, picture of you on there. So anyone wants to reach out to him? He's on that page now as well. I'm going to try to put everybody who's on uh, on this call right now on there. Awesome. So anyone Thank wants you, to reach out to him, he's on he's on LinkedIn on that page right there. Okay? So thank you. That was that was absolutely fantastic. I would love